First of all, I want to congratulate Orlando City of winning the 2022 Lamar Hunt US Open Cup over Sacramento Republic. But I also want to congratulate Sacramento in terms of this incredible run that they have to the U.S. Open Cup Final. As I mentioned before, only the third team since 1996 to make it to the U.S. Open Cup Final that is not an MLS team. And overall, you know, I thought they played well in this game. And I thought the game plan that they played in this one against Orlando City was very similar to the one against Sporting KC. You know, they defend and try not to give Orlando City a lot of chances and kind of neutralize them for 75 plus minutes. But as the old saying goes in a final, if you make one mistake, it can come back to haunt you and could cost you the final. And that one mistake that happened in the 75th minute happened and the rest is history. Because after when Orlando City got that goal, you knew that Orlando was going to run away with this one and Sacramento just pretty much imploded after that. Now, in the first half, and first of all, it was a packed crowd inside Explorer Stadium. Probably the first time that we've seen a packed crowd inside Explorer Stadium that is an Orlando City fans. And this is not to burn Orlando City fans, but when you look at most of their home games, attendance has been a pro problem this season. So it's kind of refreshing for Orlando City fans to see that place packed to the rafter. Though, you got to also give credit to Republic fans. You know, there was, they mentioned about 1,000 or so made the trip uh, across the other side of the country on, in the middle of the week to watch this game and about 6,000 so was in the Sacramento Convention Center supporting their, their team on. So yeah, the support was definitely there for, for the Republic and that, you know, again, I just thought that, that may, maybe something special is going to ha happen tonight, at least in a Sacramento Republic perspective. But in the seventh minute, uh, the first shot of the final happened when Torres blast that one uh, into the wall. I thought there was a lot of possession for Orlando, but that's exactly what I thought Republic was going to do. I thought the Republic was go going to sit back. They were looking to soak up some pressure and, and counter, very similar to the way that they play against Sporting KC in the semifinal. And I also thought the whistle seemed to be put away, at least in the, the first half, because it seems like there was some obvious fouls that was not being called. And listen, you know, there's two ways you can look at this. There's times where when the referee does not blow the whistle that sometime could be a good thing for for them not to kind of disrupt the the rhythm of play but also at the same time the other thing you got to say say with that is that yeah yes with these obvious foul that's not being called then you are really pushing the envelope in terms of of what is a foul and that you know it can get a little bit bit, bit feisty if you decide to let go of obvious foul and then frustration is going to boil but that of course did not happen in, in this play and I thought in some way it was good the fact that they maybe let some things go because this is a final and you don't want to disrupt the, the rhythm of a, a final like this uh, but in the 20th minute there was the first big opportunity with both Kara and Angulo which was wide open in the back post and somehow neither of them was able to tap in that was such a glorious opportunity there for Orlando City and a close score for Sacramento too because you know as much as I said that the Republic has neutralized this Orlando City defense for most part there was definitely some scary moment and you can definitely see there's definitely nerves that was coming in I mean you know playing a big final like that for a lot of these guys must be a, be a little bit, bit ner nervous especially in that back line you know there was time where it was a little bit disorganized but thankfully they were not made to pay at least yet but there was no doubt the pressure was coming for Orlando and again Sacramento they look nervy at at the back and and that Orlando was trying to capitalize on. They also shown uh, Don Gabbert in attendance, which I'm surprised he's not wearing purple in this game because he might as well just root for Orlando City in this one. You know, deep in his mind, he does not want Sacramento to win this because after all the all that has happened involving Don Gabbert and the Sacramento Republic, yeah, it's almost like they're, they're arch ne nemesis now alongside. Well, you know, for the Republic, their biggest arch nemesis is Don Gabbert, Ron Ron Burkle and maybe just maybe the Oakland Roots in the USL Championship but like I said for Don Ga Gabbard you know that he deep in his heart he is really hoping that Orlando City can pull it out because he you know he does not want to see see the team that he, that he of course keeps screwing him screwing them over in terms of so sort of getting into MLS decided to to complete the the final retribution which is win the US Open Cup over an MLS team and also by the way one one uh, name I've also 
haven't mentioned yet, and I didn't put this on the board, is Ernie Stewart was also in attendance of that, which, again, it's not surprised because, you know, they had to have some delegation from the U.S. Soccer Federation, knowing the fact that this competition is organized by the U.S. Soccer Federation. So why not throw Ernie Stewart in, in this this game and, and make him attend in this one alongside with Don Gabbard? Though, I was kind of surprised that the, the USL cha Championship uh, Commissioner wasn't in this, or even the USL Commissioner in general is not in this game because you would assume that in a game where it's featuring an MLS team and a USL team you would think that both commissioner from both league would be attending this one but they didn't mention the fact that USL commissioner attend this one and only the MLS commissioner that did, did attend this one alongside with Ernie Stewart but in the 22nd minute the first big chance came for Sacramento as Malik Foster just puts it wide from 20 yards out for a second I thought that was going to go in like the the fact that Foster had a really good look at that one. I thought he was going to bury it, but it just went wide there. And I thought the Republic has been good on the build-up. And that they, they really, at times, find themselves in good position. It's just that the final ball maybe needs to be improved a, a little bit. Uh, because Orlando has been dealing with those... Uh, or actually, I'm, I'm sorry, but Sacramento is just kind of lacking that final ball a little bit. And Orlando was just kind of finding it a little bit easy. To, to defend those final ball that was coming in for, for the Republic. Uh, but I also thought that the crowd seems to be jaded a little bit. I mean, as much as the atmosphere throughout this game was pretty good, there were at times where it got, got a little bit stale. And this was one of the part where, you know, I, I think maybe the crowd might be gone a little bit too too hard early in in the, the game and kind of kind of spent a little bit too much energy. I mean, you know how, how when a player, of course, spent a lot of energy and eventually they slow down. Maybe that's kind of the same case for the crowd too. But... At the same time, I also thought maybe the crowd was a little bit jaded and kind, kind of kind uh, of started to be a little bit restless is because Orlando was moving the ball way too slowly. Like, the, the, the lack of urgency that Orlando showed was kind of a little bit, 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 bit odd and that, you know, I get it. Yes, it is a final, and I know that you, you don't want to make a mistake, but you, you're the home team, and you are the favorites coming into this game. Why not be more aggressive? Why do... Why, are you you being just kind of a little bit slow and just almost play with it a, a fear factor a little bit in that again I, I just thought that that Orlando was just not being aggressive enough and that they were making it too easy for the Republic to defend like the Republic was just setting a low block and as long as Orlando just moved the ball slowly it, it's pretty easy for them to to defend that though eventually they they might have listened to me because they eventually did ramped up the pressure they decided to be a little bit more aggressive going for on the attack and I for the Republic they need to try to weather the storm heading heading into halftime like they n need to get this at nil no heading into halftime because if Orlando does eventually get that goal uh heading into halftime and, and and able to get through the pressure I don't think Sacramento would have come back from from this and thankfully uh for in a Republic perspective they were able to ride out the storm and we had to have time scoreless between both of these teams now in the second half i thought he was a little bit destroyed to start the the second half which i thought that kind of in favor of the republic because they want a half that is kind of destroyed they don't want orlando to get into their rhythm and i thought republic actually had most of the possession in the first five minute uh vit uh vit Elo then decided that he was going to try to practice some dark arts he decided to kind Kind of, kind of embellished there a little bit, which was followed by a a loud YSHN. And if you guys don't know what a YSHN is, you know it's basically equivalent of the the P chant or the the name redacted chant that Mexican fans basically shout. And that again, MLS has for a long time tried to get rid of that chant, and it seems like it it hasn't worked out. Especially, actually, I have heard that chant chant happen in in. In many games, especially in Orlando games, and I get it. Yes, you know the 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 fans must be very frustrated because the the goalkeeper decided to to basically took it dive so that he can milk some clock and maybe get bailed out in a bad situation. But chanting the YSA chant is probably not a good good way and not a good look in ter terms of try trying to to maybe get get some better reputation in terms of fan base. And we know Orlando City fans. You know, there's a reason why a lot of fans hate Orlando City fans because they always have that that reputation uh, of being maybe a little bit too too cocky and maybe a little bit over for, for the line for a team team that has hasn't really had had, had a lot 
to say. And in some way, they're almost kind of, kind of obnoxious in, in a way where they're the kind of team, you could say they're the kind of team that is kind of obnoxious, but they don't have anything to, to show for it. But uh, in the 62nd minute, there was a huge shout for a penalty as Orlando Field, like Casey, handballed that one in the box, which... Uh, remember, there's no VAR in this, so whatever the call on the field is the final call. And in the end, I thought they got this one right because you see KC clearly had his hand tucked in. And yes, the ball hit his hand, but when you have a hand tucked in like that, no way in the world that is going to be called a penalty. And I think they got that one right. Then Douglas Martinez hits one right to Galese, and you just kind of had a feeling that, you know, not only there's some anxiety that was building in, in the 24,000 so inside Exploria Stadium, them that was supporting Orlando City, but you just feel like Sacramento was starting to get into to this game, and this is when this is when it, it can be dangerous for Orlando City because the last thing you want is to get, keep this game at nil nil, and that that if it's continued to be nil nil heading into the last bit and even heading into extra time, then all of a sudden we saw exactly what we 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 did in that game between the Republic and Sporting KC because I think one of the things that the Republic did did a good job in that game against Sporting KC is the fact that for the whole game they kind of neutral. My sporting KC in terms of the chances well trying to maybe create some chances on the other end on the counter and you know even though they weren't very successful in terms of creating chances on the counter they neutralized sporting KC attack in a way where it basically forced them to go to a PK shootout and at that point you know that's exactly what they want because that's when when it's pretty much like a coin flip and that they just hope that they need to be end up on the right side of the coin flip but unfortunately it did not happen in this game because remember I said in the beginning of this review how, you know the old saying, one mistake can definitely change the outcome of a final. It happened in the 75th minute when Facundo Torres scoring from Benji Michel to make it one nothing in favor of Orlando City and that was a costly turnover from, from Casey. I mean, he basically gave this ball away in, your, in, in his own half and that how many times I've said in the past couple of weeks or, and really kind of the narrative throughout this this season of me doing review of MLS game that when you turn the ball over in your own end you are asking in for to potentially get get give up a goal and there you go that's exactly only what happened you know again up to that point Sacramento was be, being very very stingy on the defensive end but you know what that was a huge mistake there for from Casey and it cost Sacramento and Orlando was finally able to to break through to get that one nothing league and like I said you know as soon as Orlando got that goal I knew that things were not going to look well for the Republic because yeah uh, b besides the fact that this is the first time that the Republic have trailed in the US Open Cup two minutes later a penalty was given to Orlando after KC brought down Michelle and for KC oh man this is going to be be a night he would not want to remember and he's going to be having nightmares for at least a couple of days because you know again i don't think he played badly in this game but he just basically had a meltdown in this game alongside with sacramento republic you know of course first giving away, away a costly turnover and then committing a penalty here which facundo torres buries that one to make it two nothing in favor of orlando city and the republic has improved completely imploded but at the same time history was getting close for orlando city like they were chanting we want the the cup and it seems like they were going to get it because it was almost free nothing when torres basically gone through on goal and he just puts that one wide and you can see that this republic defense like i said they, they've completely imploded but they almost like they're, they're shell shocked like like two goals in a span of just three minutes and that uh, again i feel like this kind of game was similar to the one that Orlando played against the Red Bulls but remember when Orlando kept it tight for a bit and then as soon as they break break through against the Red Bulls in the second half it, and and the floodgates basically open oh it definitely opened and it felt like it was in in this game game too like the floodgates was open this could definitely would have been could be ugly for the the Republic public but at the same time it was party atmosphere inside Explorer Stadium and the 24,000 that was supporting Orlando City they knew knew that the cup was within reach uh though Lopez did had an opportunity for Sacramento but he blasts one just missed high you know Lopez has always been a folk hero for this Republic team one of the main figure of this run to the U.S. Open Cup but unfortunately he didn't really have a lot of good looks in this one and that was pretty much his only good look in this one as Orlando City did a good job in terms of shutting him him down for most part of this game but then in the sixth minute of stoppage time to add the cherry on the top, Benji Michel would score from Torres to make it 3-0 in favor of Orlando City. Both Torres and Michel 
really changed this game. And I think mostly Benji Michel, too, because, you know, I think for Enjo An Ankara, he really didn't do, do anything throughout the, the, the first half, and it almost kind of like was a statue out there. But as soon as Michel comes in, and we know that Michel can offer some dynamic plays and offer some p pace that can get behind, behind the Republic defense, yeah, I think that, that move that Oscar Pereira made was just, just not only the right move, but it was the no-brainer move. And Michel basically paid off his, his, his manager faith that he can change the game and that he basically just completely tra changed this game with the way that he was running right in that, that Republic back line. That you can also say maybe that Republic back line was start to get getting tired because, remember, while Orlando City was well-rested in this game, Republic did play... A, it on the weekend and that on a short week to fly to Orlando across the other side of the country and it in a humid night yeah it's not going to be easy to try to stay focused for throughout the entire game and you can definitely see seeing that late in the game where there that entire back line was tired and even the goalkeeper itself Vitello he was kind of getting a little bit tired too making some sloppy m mistake too and that yeah in the end the story of this game was the fact that you know Sacramento tried to hold on for as long as possible, but eventually when the the dam broke, it definitely they broke and the, the 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 floodgates was wide open in this game. But in the end, uh, in terms of the shots in this one, 15 shots for the five that Sacramento has, three shots on goal for the two that Sacramento has, two shots off target for the seven that Orlando City had, five shots on block for the one that Sacramento has, and possession wise. 52% possession compared to the 48% possession that the Republic has in this game. And, you know, again, congratulations to Orlando City winning the U.S. Open Cup. And the only thing I get, I got left to say is that, you know, remember that, that allegation of the fact that, that maybe one of the, the Orlando City staff member might might have, have spy on the, on the Sacramento Republic tra training um, uh, session that had, that had happened yesterday? I, I think that's not going to go away because I think that's going to be interesting to see see how things are going to be with that one. I mean, it's also going to be interesting whether or not if Sacramento will submit that that protest because I think there's a sp specific rule that, you know, if you submit a protest and then uh, the U.S. soccer will investigate on, on the situation. Though I, I've heard U.S. soccer is investigating in this situation. And, you know, I know I said in that video, I talked about the road to the final for both of these teams of how... You know, maybe there won't be be like like a like any anything involving being this game that you know maybe Orlando City might be stripped of their 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 title, uh, if if the allegation is, is true and stuff like that. But we don't know. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how how that that um how the the verdict of that is is going going to be. But either way, you know, you know for now, just say that Orlando City, of course, have won their first ever trophy as an MLS franchise. I mean, I know some Orlando City fans might be a little bit, bit upset when I said they haven't won anything in that previous video because you know, they have won USL championship ship before when they were in the USL. But, you know, in terms of the MLS franchise, they have not ha had a, a trophy in in their cabinet and they finally have now. Now And and also with, with that, that US Open Cup win, they're also qualified for the CONCACAF Champions League and it's going to be interesting to see how this Orlando team is going to be be playing in CCL because there, you can definitely see the talent is there with this team especially on the attack and I think for the past couple of games I've said, said this it feels like maybe things have started to turn around for this Orlando City team they finally found found some consistency especially on the attacking end because the attack has been a huge huge problem for this team throughout the season but now it feels like they they figure it out, and also some of the the, the most talented the player on this team that has started to to realize that their their potential guys like Facundo Torres uh, and even Ajahn Karan, uh in some point, yeah, this team has start started to finally hit in a right direction, and it's it's good the fact that they have hit in a, a right direction right in time for the the stretch run and potentially carry that into the playoff too. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys see you like, smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think uh, of this game itself. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys next time.